start the meeting then at 6.30. The um, first thing to check in is addition to the agenda. Do we have any? Okay. Second is review of the minutes from October 3rd, 2022. Does anyone have any comments on those minutes? Okay, is there a meeting, uh, a motion with regard to those minutes? I second that. I second that. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes of October 3rd. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Welcome. Welcome. We are down to public comment. Oh, okay. Uh, could could somebody click on got it so that we can see the screen better there? Oh. Yeah. Thank you. And welcome Chris from Orca Media. Thank you very much. So public comment. Okay. Are there public here? I see people, but maybe they're not public. Nothing? They're here for the fire. They're here for agenda. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So no public comment. Um, so just thinking a little early, six thirty. Next time six forty. But this is East Pompeii Fire Department right here. Were you expecting more people? It's six forty. They're in the little. Because we can fit something else in there if you guys are waiting for somebody. We can do it now. Sure. Let me see if there's. You okay with that? I believe we. Are. Oh, okay. I think we are. We're just checking to see if the chief is here. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we yeah. weren't rushing things. Oh, they, they got us all. Yeah, Larry's here. Okay. Sorry, I was late. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not late at all. We're a little early, so they actually started the meeting before I even got here. So it's like. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I was just going by that clock. Don't worry. They're going by a different clock. You had that clock in your truck, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the clock's my question. 630. That's all right. Um, so, East Pompeo Fire Department requests to use capital funds to purchase power lift system. I think that's the agenda item. Is there something you need to... It's uh, the... Um, the similar system that we looked at last time. Right. And what we found with it is, um, I did a short video too, if people don't know what, what this system is, it's really been a, a back saver and a safety factor for all of our staff. Uh, we have more and more, well, females in our staff, and we're getting more and more to run the system. And to pick up a big person, it's literally very difficult for even two of us, even Paul and Sandy to lift some of the people we're picking up. So the auto load system has been very, very uh, well used. Uh, we now come into the winter months where we put it, we put it rescue four, which is the older ambulance in the service. And by putting it in there, we can run that ambulance for six months and still have a safety factor for all of our personnel. When we go purchase a new ambulance in two or three years, that system will come right out of it and go into the new one. So we're not wasting any money, not doing anything. It's just a matter of transitioning over. Uh, Sandy's already contacted the manufacturer and the installer, and that's what they do on most ambulance services today. Um, currently in the capital budget, we have about 157,000, and that was as of August, because we're always a month behind. We won't get the next figures until the end of this month or September. Uh, call volume has been up. We we're running a total of each month, about 60 total calls, probably 40 to 50 ambulance calls, and the rest are fire or burn permit type related calls. So call volume is up. We're still trying to recruit staffing. has been a big thing to try to get staffing to help us out. Uh, but we are functioning, and I don't want anyone to get injured. This was brought up at the company meeting. The board <coughs> unanimously approved this purchase based upon the select board's approval. And we brought it to the membership last Tuesday night, and that was unanimously approved also as a membership. Several people talked about the safety benefits of it and just <clears throat> how beneficial it is when we have crews of just two people and to lift a big person. 
What I did is on this video here, if anybody wanted to see it, we took the old, we took today, we took a Alex, who was six foot seven, 285 pounds. We put him on the cot. The cot weighs 150 pounds itself. So that meant that whoever lifted him into the ambulance would have to lift 430 or 40 pounds into the ambulance. So it usually takes two big boys to do that. With the power lift, it's a one finger operation to lift. It goes right into the ambulance and put them right in. So we're asking that we can take the monies as we did before from capital, purchase this for rescue four. So I just got a couple questions. One is when you take somebody out of the house, Yes. You're on a stretcher, right? Not, not necessarily. We take them out in a stair chair. We seldom bring the stretcher into the house unless there's a ramp and there's no more than two stairs. We won't bring the stretcher in. We use a stair chair. That brings them out. They're easier to handle in a stair chair. They're, they're strapped in. It's got wheels on it like a, like a wheelchair. Oh, yeah. We bring them down the stairs outside yeah. right up to the cot. Yeah. It's lowered to them. Then we transition them over to the cot. Okay. Lock them yeah. on with uh, safety belts right. and then raise, and raise roll. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not doing any lifting. Lifting has been a big problem. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking that you got to take somebody from upstairs down the narrow stairs. Mm -hmm. Stretcher, it's like, ooh. No, we no, never get the tough. stretcher in. Today we had a, a, a lady over here where we had to get down 15 stairs. Right. Mm -hmm. She was a, you know, a little bigger person. We put her in the stair chair, two of us. Yeah. Brought up to the stairs. The stair chair has a mechanism, a track mechanism where we lower the tracks. Oh, nice. And just slide right down the stairs. Oh, yeah. Cot was outside, transitioned the person to the cot, nice. and yeah. we're in the ambulance. Perfect. So, what's the cost of this one? The cost is 27 or 28 oh, thousand. So, I'll address the, the cost of it. The bid for uh, Stryker to sell us that power lift that they manufacture to put into her is 30, 27 plus. And then another two thousand to install it by specialties down in Massachusetts or Connecticut. Um, so we're looking at thirty thousand, and we'd like to be more approved for thirty, thirty-five thousand, just to make sure we are covered for getting two guys down there, dropping off the ambulance, bringing someone back, or bringing them both back, going back down, picking them back up, pick up the ambulance, and bring back. If they uh, they need the ambulance for a few days to install it. So it's going to be around 30,000, 30, maybe 31,000. If you can approve us to spend up to say 35,000, no more than 35, it's something that we would, the last one was around 30,000. That's 30, what I was going to ask you. What was the last one? Yeah. 30, the last 000, one was about 30,000. 30,000. That was done uh, like last March. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why up. we just want to make sure if anything has gone up yeah, a little sure. bit yeah. and cover our travel down, travel back. And, just to make sure we aren't shorting ourselves when, if we say thirty thousand comes to yeah, yeah. thirty-one or thirty-two. Yeah. yeah, I was just wondering how the cost had gone up since last spring. It has a little bit. It has yes. a little, but not too bad. Right. It's not like diesel fuel right now. Right. No. And then the other thing is, you answered the question about transferring it to a newer ambulance. It's a so pretty good investment, and if you can just correct move it, then you know. So they good. charge a thousand dollars to take it out of the old ambulance. Right. And another two thousand to install it into our new ambulance yeah. again, yeah. which are, and yeah. that is something that they said that's their that's bid on that too. And that should be a twenty or twenty-five year lifespan. Yeah. And these things have a long lifespan. Yeah, and, and hopefully that doesn't go up. Like you know, what they're telling us now it's looking like three years from now or four years from now, our new ambulance. Maybe our new ambulance it might. Maybe the ambulance that we have may last a little longer, but the we don't know. But that's where we're at right now. You know, it may be five years, but that thousand dollars take it out, two thousand dollars to well, install. Okay. That's still may, maybe, yeah. But we'll be saving the cost of buying that power unit all over again. Yeah, yes. And, and how much life do we have left in each unit, each of our ambulance units? Uh, one of the ambulances is, is just five years old, so that's got another 10, 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. The ambulance we're putting in is the 2010. It was due for replacement in 25 or 26. So three more years, if it, if it runs longer, we run it. We don't always replace on the dates that we have set for capital investment. If it's running and there's no mechanical problems, we'll run it as we've done with all the other ones. Yeah, it's just an educated test. Same we do with the time. Yeah. 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 Does anybody want to see a two minute video of it? So sure. if you haven't seen it yet, and uh, let me just see if I can get this to, uh,
This is a manual stretcher. Yeah. 125 pounds of the oxygen tank and equipment we call 150. So what we normally would do is pull that stretcher back. Alex is a larger person, and Alex, uh, if we had to lift Alex on this cot, it would take two people. Alex is, what's your weight, Alex? Alex, Alex is 6'7", 285. So we have 285 plus 150, we have 400 plus pounds to lift manually into the ambulance once the car is down. So that's been the problem before. Not one, one person could not lift that car. And two people lifting a total of 400 plus pounds would be a challenge. So we'll put that car back in and you'll see Skills requires lifting. So the safety aspect of this is that we'll show you what the power lift system does. So that's lifting the manual stretcher. And if we have a, a person of any weight, what can we have to do? We'll come over to the other ambulance, which is Rescue 3. <coughs> Alex, do you want to go over set the emergency break? Turn the key on for the set the emergency break. Uh, and what we'll do here is the power lift system. <coughs> so just set the emergency break. And the ambulance automatically lowers from its position. So when Alex gets in, it's over 440 pounds on the cot. On the stretcher, and again, it's over 400 and probably 25 or 30 pounds. And so we have one person now to try to take Alex out. We are at the, at the ambulance. So there's Alex on the cot. So now we would just pull him out. All the way out, and we're going to just show you that we had to lift him. Now we're putting him back in. He was on the ground, so Mark's going to push the stretcher back in. Basically, it's a one-hand, two-hand operation, one person without hurting that person. So that's the the benefits of. So that that's what any person on our squad can lift a three, four hundred or up to a seven hundred pound person mm -hmm. in the ambulance. <clears throat> the biggest thing for this is when we get to the hospital, we're on at the back, we back in. One person pulls it out one hand, pushes the button, it loads, we pull the person into the hospital, wheel it up to the hospital bed, adjust the height and is usually four or five people that slide them over or we use a special hover mat to slide a heavy person across. So this is a huge safety factor, especially in slippery conditions in the winter time. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. And we'd like your approval tonight to, to yeah, go. I think you have other questions. Do we have any People are a lot of weight to pick up. All the ambulance services around us are run these Montpelier, right. Barrytown, yeah. <clears throat> Williamstown, uh, everybody around us runs a, a power lift system because of the staffing yeah. and because of the, the waste we run into. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. You want me to try to make a motion on this? Sure. It shouldn't be that hard. I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, see you jumping in. Um, well, I'm not supposed to, but I can't. <laughs> the, uh, I make a motion that uh, the select board pass. Uh, a motion to approve the use of capital funds to purchase a second power lift for the fire department up uh, for a cost of up to $35,000. Yeah, can we specify that it's East Montpelier Fire Department capital funds? Yep. Okay, I'll second it. <clears throat> we could probably make that work. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. I'm okay. ready. Okay. So we need a second. I second. Yeah. Oh, you second? Yeah. yeah. Any more? Any further discussion? 
No? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. It. Thanks for coming in. Looking forward to serving the town <laughs> easier, safer, and quicker. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so we're a little early on the um, health insurance options. I assume that Terry Martino is going to zoom in Should at be. seven. Yes. So why don't we try to get through like the listers, errors, and emissions revised request? Yes, they sent a no one, Is anybody coming in to talk about that? I don't believe probably not. I don't believe so. No. Okay, so. We were a little confused last time. Yes, and they so did they clean that up? Showing an increase of that 0.89 on one, and then a decrease on a on another parcel. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, two. So they corrected that. Mm -hmm. And then also you have a document there, Seth, that um, there's a little flag. I think it's on the second page. It's in your stack. that's above the warrants. Yeah. Um, that assuming you all approve this as restated um there's a document that the select board members would also sign um, as well it, that was something new that you know they're they're learning some of these uh processes we have some, some new people um with the listers and so they're kind of learning how to dot the i's across the t's so yeah. okay so what we approved last time is it was an error in Correct. itself okay so uh, I voted against that for procedural reasons. Thank you for capturing that, Deirdre. Uh, so I will move to reconsider and reject our approval of the changes of assessment to the 2022 as bill grand list as submitted by the listers to the October 3rd meeting of the select board. So wait a minute. We added in for last year the sixty-three hundred dollars. Didn't we? Uh, last last meeting. Because what they did is they they, they changed I, the. I thought uh, I would just start with a clean agenda, a clean. Okay. So place. He's taking it away. All right. Just, just, we can just do just it that. Undo way. what we did last time and then accept right. this. Right. Yeah. Do you, do you want to do it a different way? I, I well, no. I'm just saying that when we added in the sixty-three hundred, that was accurate. It's just mm -hmm. that the two requests. Right. I think it's just simpler for Yeah, okay, well, let's do it. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then All do right. a new one. Okay, yeah. do a new one. Yeah. Okay. So the motion's on the floor. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So we are undoing that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll make a new motion to accept the changes of us to approve the changes of assessment to the 2022 as bill grand list as submitted by the listers to the October 17th select board meeting, today's select board meeting. Yeah, that's just to adjust it. It doesn't look like, does it have an ad at the end? It looks like it's going to be reduced. Mm -hmm. It's actually a net reduction, but. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a motion to adjust the grand list according to their request. Correct. Yeah. I'll second it. Yeah. All is, is, uh, is there any more uh, discussion on that? Anybody have any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes appear to have it, do have it. Okay, so that takes care of the errors and omissions. Um, oh, we still got a few minutes here. Do the, uh, what about the cemetery? Uh, oh, we have to have people here for that. John Boucher may, I think, he may he's planning to attend yeah. for that. Um, How about so, consideration of East Montfield Gully Dome? Yes. Yep, that's usually pretty straightforward. Um, Guthrie has reviewed this request and is comfortable with is it. Is this pretty standard? Yes, it's the standard same. Standard road crossings? Yes. Yeah, right here. Same as prior year. Same ones, yep. Snow Hill Road, Coburn, Center Road, Agathon County Road. Um, so we just um, need a motion to approve those, that request. I move to approve the East Montpelier Gully Jumpers request uh, for road crossings at four places as detailed in their letter of October 13th, 2022, 
to the select board. Second. Here to second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The request is approved by the Gully Jumpers. Um, the other thing that we could talk about is discussion of front porch form post of agenda. This was brought up at the last meeting by yep. Mr. Wayne. Um, I was proposing that we that I would include a post on front porch forum at the same time as emailing the agenda, posting it to the website, right? Basically, providing a link um, yep. to the website. Yeah, the reason I proposed the link. Actually, I was somewhat taking that because this was actually mentioned to the prior town administrator shortly before, um, I believe it was at an April meeting, uh, before he left. And he commented that he was trying to get people to go to the website um, to get information. So the reason I was proposing posting a link to the website as opposed to the actual agenda was to try to get people to go to the website because there's additional information on the website. Yeah. You know, the annotated agenda and all of the documents that are posted there that someone might not otherwise see. Yeah, see, right. But, uh, we but, could. Yeah, I, um, yep, Gene and I discussed this a little, little bit ahead of time. I think it's great to post that link to the, the web page because it's oh, continuously yeah. updated, and especially with the very helpful annotated agenda that comes out shortly before the meeting starts. And uh, you know, people can get a lot of their answer, their questions answered that way. And you know, just for the fun of it, I caught, I selected everything in today's agenda from the PDF, and I posted it into what would be a front porch forum post into to the, the format on the web. And uh, these little funny arrows, these bullets on here, they came out as some unintelligible sign. But other than that, it was just completely readable and. You know, to increase transparency, to allow townspeople to see easily without clicking through on something what we're going to be talking about. I think it's fine to, to I think it's uh, helpful to follow Michael Dwayne's suggestion and just add it that way. It won't, it won't look beautiful, but the information is there. Front Porch Forum is not designed to look beautiful, unfortunately. You, you can do hardly any formatting on it. And just so I'm clear, so the proposal is to include the agenda itself with a link to the website. I would actually just copy and paste this page as yes. you see. And, right. And which would it would which would inherently include the link to the website. Yeah. And so it's not going to be too bulky for front porch form? I mean I don't no. ever read it no way. No. So it's typical size for, for things. It's a longer it's post a longer than you typically it's a, yeah. yeah, it's a pretty I'm just saying it's a long posting to stick on there, but you know gets mixed in with a used tires for sale and yeah I mean, there's some yeah. some ones that are that short I know yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah it's, it's fine with me I mean <coughs> I can copy and paste it in and we can see how it goes the only yeah. concern that I do have is that I will then have people calling and asking me to email because this has happened in the past I get that email them Tell documents them the related to this one and then I will email back a link to the website right if Once that again. becomes problematic I will let the board know because then I will request that we pull back on on this post from porch form yeah it just because it's going to tie up a lot of time yeah if i'm having to respond to a lot of inquiries yes. with links to the website then i would rather go back to the way things have been and i think that's why bruce was hesitant right. to do this mm -hmm. back then yeah or just have a standard email saying everything for the meeting is on the website here's the link. still takes time to respond to those inquiries yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no but i did you know we're yeah. we're living in a time when democracy is under threat around the country and around the world and what we can do to increase transparency here, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Well, we need to on our, our neighboring towns having a lot of problems, just yeah. perception. Yeah. Perception is what it is. Yeah, understood, but we just need to be mindful of the, you know, any added burden on our staff. We don't want it to. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. we, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, we put a lot of information on the website, so unfortunately, mm -hmm. if people did go to our website, mm -hmm. I know. information is there. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. People, unfortunately, today don't want to seek information in a lot of mm -hmm. cases so it's too bad we couldn't make some automatic reply that wouldn't tie up your time but, you know, yeah, I mean, it's possible to make a template to a lot of email programs where you just say thank, but thank you but with a template i still have to respond to that person copying and paste that template in and still click send it still yeah, takes time absolutely absolutely and our job is to serve the public and you know if we need to educate people to go to our website then we need to educate people to go to our website too. Yeah, we, you know, we, we put a lot of work into making that website usable for townspeople. I know I do that work. And, yeah, exactly. And it's tough to do and, everything in 35 hours a week. And if they don't know so. that it's there,
there, then that work is for naught. Oh. Which is why I was proposing posting the link to the website because I thought that would provide people better information to go start going to the website. Mm -hmm. That was the intent of my proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your intent actually was to say on Slumport Forum, there's a meeting and the information's on the website. I was actually trying to drive traffic to the website right. as opposed no, no. to continuing yeah. to see and that's a good idea. away from the website. That right. was my intent. I kind of like that idea. Well, but if you do that, people have to go click twice to find the information. First, they have to click on the link in Front Porch Forum, yeah. and then they have to find the agenda on the website. So, I would argue that if someone was interested, they would likely want to click and get yeah. that information. How do they it's a little know easier to hit reply to me, just as it happens yeah. with the county road posts as well. Um, to hit reply to me and, and send an email that way because that's the other thing that Front Porch Forum enables. How do they know if they're, they're interested in a topic if they can't see in Front Porch Forum that it's, it's going to be discussed? Well, let, let's just try it for one meeting and we'll see what happens. If you're flooded with stuff, then we're going to have to pull back and just do the website. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably put a note in there that says, please don't call the office, just check the website. Yeah. That would be it's a standard sure. statement. Bold. Yeah. Sure. Do you have any sure. questions about the, you know, Town administrators, the office staff is not equipped to deal with questions. I mean, if we're going to, I'm, I'm going to just copy this as is. I'm not going to amend it in any way. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. if we're going to do, if we're going to post this, then it needs to be this as it, as the morning stands. Yeah. I don't really want to add any other commentary to it. Yeah. So that's what I will do. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so there is another tweak that you could do. Select board members could be contacted. I've actually considered that. And then you wouldn't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Since you brought that up, I had uh, a uh, person. I, I, I kind of like that idea, actually. Mm -hmm. A person in town mentioned that they don't know how to get a hold of select board members mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. our phone numbers aren't on the website, it's our names. Yeah, oh, my phone numbers are? Mm -hmm. I think yours might be. Yeah, I think the chair is, but I don't know what else there's on. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I have noticed on other town sites, emails and phone numbers mm -hmm. are available for mm -hmm. select board members. I mean, I don't know. I don't mind if my emails on it. Yeah. I think we should have town emails if we're going to have our emails posted there. That's what we used to do. Yeah. Gmail. I would say like up to ten. I think, or maybe <laughs> sixteen. Mm -hmm. So a new account, uh, separate from your personal account. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and when you leave, then they, they disable you disable that, and then when a new person comes on, you just you just end one and start the other. Yeah, yeah. There's no extra cost to that if you stay under a certain number of emails, email addresses. Yeah. In the past, we had uh, issues with the cost of adding more than, I forget, half a dozen yeah. email accounts to the town system, but I don't know where we're at with that. Microsoft, there would certainly be a cost, because I believe that would be a Microsoft 365 license to activate an email through the actual town email. You can just do it through Gmail. That's something we do ourselves. No, you can. I never did it myself, and every time I've taken a job there twice here, I've never set up my own email account. It was already there waiting. So you have to buy a, a Google Suite. You have to pay Google for that service. I mean, that's the way we do it at the radio station. Um, I don't know if, if, if municipalities have to pay. I'm not sure. If we were if we went over a certain number, we would have to pay. But under a certain number, and I can't remember if it's ten or fifteen, mm -hmm. you don't have to pay. Could you, you investigate how hard work does it and let us know? I could. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be gone though, but I can do it online. Uh huh. Oh, that's right. You're gonna be gone. Yeah. And next um, week, right. October 26th. Yeah. They have a, a network administrator. She takes yeah. care of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind if it was my own email. I don't. Why would I care? You don't want you your, don't your own email, email on there. <laughs> well, it is already out there. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess it kind of is. The thing, the thing is, though, Scott is my email. The thing is, I always had a problem with having my uh, having a work-related email on my personal email. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing work for the town, even if you're on the select board, if you start having discussions like that, then you're technically it's discoverable. They can go in and, and, yeah. and take your email. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not like I have anything secret on my email, but who cares? I mean I just rather not give someone the opportunity to do that. I mean I Who's make they? sure that I uh, in a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Oh. I make sure that I email when I email I copy, blind copy the East Montpelier 
vt at gmail.com or east montpelier i guess at gmail.com so that the town has a copy of the emails so people making public records requests can go there and i also uh, try to put in my signature for animal control officer or select board member so that if i get a public records request i can easily do a search and find those emails but it's just so much easier if i had a separate account well we can do that i just think that to if we're going to go to post our agenda on front porch form people they got requests it's not really fair to the office to have to answer all those select board members are equipped to do that yeah yeah so that's what i like to do makes it us better at doing our jobs right get those Questions. But if you want to just, just do it on your email, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have any problem with it. <laughs> well, I was actually going to say that but for now, that's one, thing, one thought that occurred to me was do we set up an email and I could reach out to RB Tech to find out what the cost would be a one email that is select board at eastmontpelierbt.org. Yeah. Um, the problem is if someone wants to speak to one of you individually yeah. or communicate to you yeah. individually, yeah. it would negate that. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think it should be clear whether a person is speaking as a select yeah. board member or for the select board and yeah. calling it select and board. And then that gets into a forum situation, too. Yeah, that gets sticky. All of you could access the email. Sticky. Right, we all respond. Yeah. 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 No well. Yeah. All right, so for now, we're just going to front, we're going to post it to you have. Yeah, I'll just call. But I'm going to ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Never paid any attention to it before because I didn't have. Well, it was automatically. They just gave it to you. <laughs> That's right. Well, I remember when we discussed it earlier. Oh yeah. No. It sounds like a good idea to me. And it sounds like a good idea to put. I don't mind putting my email on the on the post. People get questions. Fine. So, so you'll you'll check into Hardwick and Gina. You're going to check in with RB Tech about the cost of setting up additional emails. On our account? I can ask them. I know the cost is rather high okay. to set up Microsoft. I'd rather do that Google thing or whatever you're talking about. Yeah, Google. Because yeah. that's definitely a much more involved process. Yeah. Or hardbigbt.org is what. Mm -hmm. Callus that was their own things. emails. What's that? Callus Select Board has their own emails. Well, look at the trouble they're in, so that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when they get in trouble, they can write them. Oh, well. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. So I guess we're done with that discussion. Yeah. Uh, Gina, you have any more comment on it? You good? Okay. So we're going to move to the health um, health insurance options with Terry Martineau, who is now with us on the Zoom. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got a little bit of, bit of um, feedback, feedback in there. In there. Yeah, I, think it's, yeah, I think it's picking up. It's kind of reverberating. Well, we can certainly hear you. I bet you I can. Bet you can. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to be able to, be able able to, to do this very loud. Very loud. Very loud. But it's not so loud now. What's we turn it down. Yeah. This yeah. mic is right here. Maybe we yeah. can get this out. I think that's what it is. I think it's picking her back up. I'll turn that down. Well, can, thank you for you having me um, during this now? evening. Terry, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I can still hear myself, but that's that's all right. I'll try to ignore myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be able to hear yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a reverberation. It's weird. <laughs> You say you don't like what you hear from uh, yourself. Uh, oh, that didn't sound good, did it? <laughs> uh, okay, so you're going to walk us through this health insurance options, I assume. Um, if that's what you'd like from me, I'm happy to do that, sure. Um, you, well, what's, what's your perception of what you're supposed to be doing for us? Um, to be here and answer any questions that you might have, but I'm happy to walk through it, um, and that might help spur some questions. Uh, did, do you have copies there in front of you? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, um, from the information that I have, I'm showing that um, you have all of the current enrollment under the Platinum Plan, uh, one of the exchange health plans. Um, I think you offer both Blue Cross and MVP, but everybody's enrolled with MVP currently. Yeah. Okay. 
perfect. So you may or may not have heard, this is a terrible renewal season in the health insurance business. Super, super high rate increases. Blue Cross Blue Shield um, had a, an average approval across all their plans of 11.7% increase for 2023. Um, and Blue Cross, I'm sorry, MVP had an average overall increase of 18.3% increase. Now, the plans within the exchange with, you know, individually with Blue Cross and with MVP, the rate differentials are a little different. Um, but that was the average. So for the platinum plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield, that one, um, that plan actually received a 12.7% increase over 2022. And that's shown at the bottom. And then the uh, MVP for the same plan had a 19.72% increase. Now that's a ginormous increase, but as you can see, the MVP rate is still slightly less expensive than the Blue Cross rate. You know, the differential was much greater last year and it was a clear, you know, stay with MVP. It's getting closer and closer now. The peach, the peach highlights or orange or whatever color that is, um, that denotes a change from 2022 to 2023 in the plan design. So at the very top with the platinum plan, you see where it says, um, so on the very far left-hand side, it's kind of a short schedule of benefits. The column in the middle is your, is your uh, platinum plan. Yep. The top row under the primary care physician. Today, it's a fifteen dollar copay. Yeah. For 2023, it's sort of a little, a bit of an enhancement. Um, members get three P, uh, primary care physician visits. That's what that PCP stands for. They get three free visits to see their primary care physician. So that's each covered member of the family. As you know, your preventive care is covered in full. This would be three visits because you're not feeling well. Okay, so you get three of those free in 2023, and then the $15 copay kicks in. It looks like 20, but, or is that, oh, that's gold plan, right? That's the gold 15. plan. That's just a, another off, that's an option. You know, you, yeah. you, it's the next level from the platform. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's the only change around the office visits. Um, it remains the same for your specialty care. It's a $40 copay. If you need to see a chiropractor, it's a $20 copay. As I said, all your preventive care, which is your well person visits, mammograms, pap tests, colonoscopies, those types of things are all considered no member costs. And then other services, which would be things that are not considered to be office based. So that would be, you know, maybe lab work, um, a hospital stay, an x ray. Those things are all subject to the deductible, which is down at the bottom. And the annual individual deductible for 2023 has gone up to $425. It was $400. And then the family deductible went to 850 from 800. So all those, you know, non-office based services that I was just describing, would you'd have to pay the deductible first, and then benefits are paid at 90 percent, and the member pays 10 percent until they reach their maximum out of pocket down at the bottom. If for individuals it's 1500. And for families, it's 3000 So question, at yes. the bottom of the column on the left, the first set of, uh, um, the first list, there is an asterisk and it says integrated deductible. Where is the 
previous asterisk. What's that referring it's to? It's not. It, I apologize. It doesn't correlate to the platinum plan. That is actually for one of the silver plans. Okay, we can cross that off. Then. You can, yes. Okay. Thank you for and bringing that to my attention. Sure. And then in the second and third column, um, just before it lists the deductibles, it says stacked deductible. Could you explain what that term means? Absolutely. Thank you. Good question. Stacked. Um, so this term stacked is only applicable if you are enrolling in a two person or family plan. If you are enrolling in single coverage, it doesn't apply. Okay. But what it means is if you have uh, one or more people on the plan, if you have, say, for example, one person who's more ill than the other family members, each individual person in the family meets their own deductible, their own individual deductible, and then moves on to post-deductible benefits. So in cases where you know you have a, a family of three maybe, and one family member is utilizing the, the medical care more than the others, that family member can go ahead and meet their $425 deductible, get right on to their post-deductible benefits. The other family members will meet either collectively together or one other person will meet another $425 and then the whole family deductibles met and then everybody moves on to post-deductible benefits. Does that make sense? So if it's a, if you have, it's a two person family, both members have to hit 425. If it's more than two people, you just need two people in your family to meet 425 and everyone else no longer has to meet the deductible. Correct, in order, in order, in order to meet that family deductible, that is correct. But there is no, you know, if only you know, if one only person, one person if only the individual, the individual meets the 425, 425 it, isn't it isn't necessary, necessary for that other, other 425, 425 to be met, met before, before that, first that first person goes on, on to their post-deductible post benefit. Right, right. Okay, right. good. Okay. I just want to make sure that was clear. clear. But yes, but yes, you're correct. You're correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hmm. The other thing yeah, to know is, is the prescription, prescription drug, drug um, um, out, of pocket out of pocket is noted, is noted um, uh, sort of two thirds, two -thirds of the way down. down. Yeah. $1,400 is the maximum, maximum out of pocket exposure, exposure if you have single have coverage, or, or I should say for an individual. And $2,800 is the maximum, maximum that somebody can pay in prescription pay drugs annually, annually for the family. For the family. Okay. okay, but in order, but in to, order get to get your, your true out-of-pocket out of pocket exposure, exposure like, like if I use all the medical all services the available, available to me, to me what is my maximum, maximum out-of-pocket out exposure? exposure? You have, you to, have add to add the $1,400 RX out-of-pocket to the $1,500 medical out-of-pocket. So the true out-of-pocket is really $2,900. Yep. For an individual. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the RX doesn't count towards the. That is correct. Paper. They are they not are integrated. Not integrated. They're not integrated, right? And I'm um, sorry, um, non-preferred brands. So if you're, you know, it's a drug that. What does non-preferred brand mean? Non-preferred non brands are generally, generally prescriptions, prescriptions that are. Um, um, Generic. Maybe they haven't they gotten, gotten their, their oh, what am I, what's the word, word I'm trying to say? They've got, they've got they're, they're FDA approved, approved, but they're not on the formulary. The That's the word I'm looking for. for. So, so each carrier has their own has formulary. So a non-preferred so non prescription drug, drug, you would, you um, would the, uh, the member has to pay half of that. The insurance carrier pays 50% and the member pays the other 50%. To a cap of fourteen hundred dollars. So, if I get the term right, the not being on the formulary, it's not a common medication. It might correct. Be a common medication correct. 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 More novel disease as opposed yes. to yes. insulin or whatever. 
Insulin um, is actually is something that's considered, considered to be preventive, preventive and that's covered the best the of everything. everything. But you're right, but you're it's, right. Something it's something that could be like a compound, compound drug, drug or, or it's, it's not usually, usually, it's not common. It's not common. Okay, does that help? Does that help? Yep. So, so there's not, not a whole lot, lot to say about, about the platinum plan, plan other than, other the, than fact the fact that it's getting a pretty getting a large rate, rate increase, increase, but it's but still it's less still expensive than Blue Cross. And unfortunately, unfortunately those are our those only, are two, only options, two options, Blue Cross and MVP. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of benefits and just people's uh, experience in dealing with Blue Cross and MVP, how would you characterize them for the Platinum Plan? Are you asking that if you notice me? Yes. Um, um, the same. The same. The, yeah, okay. the, they, they literally, literally, they both they have a national have a network, network of providers. Of providers. Yeah. It's a standard, it's a standard exchange, exchange plan, so the benefits have to be exactly, have to be exactly the same, same from carrier from to carrier, carrier that's, that's legislated, 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 federally, federally mandated. mandated. Um, so um, there so really there is really no is difference, no difference. Um, um, aside, aside from the rate. From the rate. Right. So is there any reason why we would want to go with a Blue Cross plan then? Not in my Not recommendation, in my recommendation no. no. Okay. Unless you've Unless heard you've from, heard your, from members your members that, that um, um, they're having trouble and they're not happy. Not happy. Okay. I honestly I have not heard from any of them. Last year, both were offered. Just right. opted to pay for Blue Cross. I don't know with a 2% difference uh -huh. in them now, mm -hmm. if someone would not go ahead and opt to pay for Blue Cross. Mm -hmm. If the board wanted to offer both again. Yeah. Thank you for that so reminder. Yeah. Yes. So if we offered both, would they have to pay the difference? That's how you, that's how it was done in the past. That's what I thought, yeah. right. Yeah. But they were allowed to elect Blue Cross uh -huh. last year. It's yeah. just the town it was they would have had to pay eight percent essentially okay. the, the difference between the two. Yeah. And is there any extra administrative burden or other cost on the town to make something available in that way as opposed to saying you must take MVP? It's just added work for payroll. That's all. Yeah, it right. would have been, I mean, regardless, yeah. the same as last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, do we have more questions for Terry? I don't know. Here? No. No. Well, I thank well, you. I thank you for your time. For your time. Well, thank yeah, you let, for your time. Actually, let, let me ask you a, a related question, but not directly related to the decision that we're making about this. And that is, um, over the weekend, I was talking with somebody who's arranging a Bernie Sanders event tomorrow uh, about the number of medical claims that are denied around the country and the tiny percentage of people who uh, appeal those denials and apparently a lot of people don't know that you can appeal those denials and what your chances of success are. Um, what, um, what advice do you have to us to pass on to our employees about um, appealing denials of medical coverage? Absolutely, Absolutely. Always, always appeal, appeal a, medical a medical denial. denial. Okay. Um, I'm a former 20 year employee with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont. Um, and have been with Hickok and Boardman for the last six years. Insurance companies make mistakes. They're human beings like everyone else. Um, providers make mistakes and claims get coded incorrectly and they get billed that way. The insurance company is going to re review the claim as billed. So if it's been, if something, you know, didn't get communicated correctly, and the member knows more about it, then it is. I, I'm a huge advocate of the of a, a patient taking on for themselves. So yes, absolutely. You always have the right to appeal a denial. Thank you. Do you, do you have a suggestion for a resource that people can turn to to help them through that process? 
Um, well, there's always a, an um, ombudsman. I can't hardly say that, pronounce that word. But with each carrier, Blue Cross Blue Shield does have um, kind of a third party ombudsman that helps to process through that appeal process. Um, it's also important that each enrolled person receive a copy of the certificate of coverage because all of the appeal procedure is in that certificate of coverage if okay. they read it. Okay. Very good. Thank all you. Right. All righty. Good information. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, have a good meeting and let me know if something else comes up that I can assist with. Oh, we definitely will. Thank you. Very good. Enjoy the evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So it sounds like the health insurance kind of played out like we thought. Yeah. So we should offer just like we did last year, and then I guess we're going to keep covering the 100% of the premium. Seems like that's what we were decided on last time. Uh, so what other, what other questions do we have about that? The only thing that I've also proposed is speaking to administrative pains is the stipend previously was um, right. divided over 24 um, yes. payments, which is we have 26 pay periods. <laughs> yeah, that was a pain. I've never seen anybody not divide something over a pay period. Um, I'm not quite sure, Michelle and I have really racked our brain as the why that it was felt mm -hmm. that it needed to be done that way. So the only thing I would ask is that likewise, if somebody opts for Blue Cross um, and decides to pay that difference, I would want to, you know, we would potentially amortize that cost over a 26 pay period yeah. instead mm -hmm. of instead of yeah. 24. Yeah. Um, so, and same thing with the stipend. But so the thing I, about the stipend is that's going to be increased. If well, we're going to do it the if, same if method that we did. Math, so we, we didn't do that for years and years and years. It was only last year or two, we were like, oh, well, the health stipend should reflect the cost of insurance. And that's what happened. The health stipend before it was like $60 a month or something. It was tiny. But then we got on this bandwagon of making it more reflecting, reflective of the cost of insurance. You know, insurance costs a lot of money. You're not going to take it. You deserve to, you know, Make, get some a fair recompense for your decision not to take health insurance. You're getting it somewhere else, we assume. Now, now Judith, you weren't happy with our thought on that. Is that correct? Yeah, no, the goal was to provide health insurance for our employees. Exactly. If someone has health insurance, then we don't need to provide them with that benefit. Exactly. And that's what we're doing. We're, they're not taking it, but they have it from somebody else. We're not trying to prevent them from getting health insurance. That well, they have to pay, our goal. And they have to pay whatever they have to pay for that insurance there. So the stipend would help them pay for that. Well, they, you know, the only people we have not taking now, they, they, the wife gets it somewhere else. So they're still they're still getting insurance. Right. I mean, that was a concern that was voiced last year at the meeting that we had about the health. It was like we don't want to pay people not to get insurance. We're not encouraging them not to get insurance. We're just keeping them off our health insurance plan, but they have one somewhere else. As it relates to the amount, I defer to the board and your experience. Well, I just it, wanted well, to buy it over 26. The, the, it was only last <laughs> year or the year before that we started doing it based on reality, based on a percentage of the premium. So I'm just saying, moving forward, for the one person that we have on it, we're going to have to adjust that amount. Because if we follow the same methodology, correct? Exactly. That would be different. Exactly. Right. So, I guess we'll just do the math when we start. I mean, unless we make a motion that says we base it to a certain amount, but if it's a percentage, which I believe it is, yeah. So what we'll just do the math. For the math, it would it's forty eight four thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Per, per year. Yes. Of course. Um, it would, doing the math, it yes. would go to $5,822 right. per year. Right, substantial so amount. it's almost $1,000 yeah. difference. Yeah, but I think that's the fair thing to do. Is that just is, follow that method that forward. It's up to you and your peers. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, is everyone on board with that? 
You're following what I'm saying. I am. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And I think it makes sense. It does make sense to me that we have a method that we carry forward from year yeah. to year. It doesn't make sense to me that we just freeze it at a certain amount and call it say, hey, buddy, good enough. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we employed the method last year, mm -hmm. and I guess we just got to keep following through. Mm -hmm. I mean, Presumably competing plans at other places are increasing quite a bit as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they are. Right. So... I don't think we need to make a motion to that fact. We just need to follow through with the math and keep that going. But we do uh, need to change it to 26 yeah. pay yeah. periods because that's a screw up. Because I've been party to that. I don't think we need a motion for how it's deducted uh, with 24, 26. I do think we need a motion about offering. An oh, we do need that. Yeah, we yeah. do need that. I was just trying to get you clarified on that. On yeah, as you saw in this minute. Yeah, as he, I saw. Because he reviews payroll, he sees that it's complicated when you do it over the 24. Yep. In March, it was missed, <laughs> that it was a three period paid. month, and it got overpaid, and then Michelle caught it. Yeah. Um, and when she was about to do it, <laughs> that she overpaid again yeah. following that. And that's when I said to her, this is crazy. Yeah. We should be doing this over 26 pay periods. This is why. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, like, it was just a confusing mess. for the employee. It's a set amount mm -hmm. on every yeah. check. It's so, so we're we're all like trading letters back and forth and like blah 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 <laughs> blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> so, so it doesn't change the total amount the employees have received. So I think your motion, you know, we can put the twenty six in there if, if you want. But you know, the the key is that the your motion at least includes whatever that that total would be, and we can obviously do the math to get to the twenty six. But that's more of an administrative aspect of yeah. fulfilling. The but motion. but the getting back to the original thought was we're going to offer Blue Cross Blue Shield same as last year, mm -hmm. MVP. If you want Blue Cross Blue Shield, you got to pay the difference. That's yeah. it. Yeah, we just may actually see some employees go to Blue Cross and Blue Shield, whereas last year it, this is, we, it depends. Yeah, right. we don't, you know, it doesn't matter. Really it is what it is. And, you know, it is what it is. If yeah. people aren't happy with MVP, then that's a good thing. Go to, yeah. you know. I haven't heard any complaints. That, no. I, that I can tell you. Yeah. So. Okay. So I move to offer all full-time employees, I believe, is, in is correct. And, Full-time and part-time. Yeah. Yeah, we do have a part-time employee that is, and yes, that is. Yeah, he just pays a percentage. He has to pay a portion. According to his hours. Benefits are offered. Okay, so I move to offer full-time and part-time employees, comma, in accordance with the personnel policy to get the prorated stuff. Okay. Uh, one, 100% uh, payment of MB, MVP platinum plans. Two, the options of using either MVP at or Blue Cross. And three, a stipend in lieu of health insurance that is 50% of the single person platinum plan for MVP. Is that what we're doing? No. Okay. Did you get that, Deidre? You're amazing. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, so that takes care of the health insurance. Okay. Perfect. Um, are we ready? I see Guthrie is here for the mm -hmm. County Road Project update. We are ready for that report, I believe. I'm going to let you know. So essentially the culvert work is complete um, on County Road and I've provided both on the website and in your packets um, all of the reports that Chase and Chase performed mm -hmm. upon for their site visits um, and also that Ryan did let us know that he the work was completed mm -hmm. to their satisfaction and that we are essentially clear to process the final payment which is in the warrant that you all have in front of you thank thank you for that by the way that was very useful to look yes. back and see all the work that they've done yeah it was yeah. very interesting to read yeah. definitely i agree um and pike started repaving um Guthrie probably has at least put eyes on that i saw them mobilizing this morning but did not see any of the actual paving complete 
um, of the painting I was very pleased to see <laughs> all of the people and vehicles and equipment um, on the road. So, um, so paving should be starting this week. The hope is that the first layer will be on this week with the second layer starting towards the end of the week. Weather could pose an issue. Um, I drove right next to a paved lane on County Road on my way here, and I look forward to driving on the paved lane on my yes, way home. I look forward to driving it as well. You no, know, the weather's going to be pretty good. The weather, we're lucky with the weather. It's good. Don't you think so, Guthrie? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's warm. It's pretty good weather, really. Yeah, we've gotten very lucky with the warm yeah. weather. And it looks like it's going to be even nicer come the weekend. Yeah. It's like, whoa, this is yeah, good. It is. Good stuff. I love it. So right now, Things are looking good for a completed county road here in the next week or so. I thought the guardrails looked great when I drove by there. They did an awesome job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anything else, Guthrie? I, 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 what, Gina, I, Gina, Gina, pretty much what I'm trying to Okay. Do you want to ask if members of the public have any questions? Uh, we have maybe, had some people. I see there's members, I think, of the public, but they may be here for something else, actually. Mm -hmm. But does anybody have any questions about the County Road Project and the timeline, quality of the work, et cetera, et cetera? You've been here for something else. Mm -hmm. But anyway. I've got, I've got no questions. I've looked at it myself. So. I'm really I'm happy. Really happy with the quality yeah, of the work. Quality of the work. Been, huh? It should be yeah. should be really it's nice. Really nice. Mm -hmm. okay. They will be. They will be. Have to pull the paper pull out. The paper out. Uh, they got to go down. Go down. Rochester. Rochester's finish up finish one up one day's worth. Day's worth. Of Oh, then they're going to come back on the second layer? On Thursday. On Thursday. On Thursday? Wednesday, they have another project right. they need to complete, and then the plan is they'll be back on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Guthrie, do you think they will be full? It will be completed this week by Friday? No, I'm not certain, no, I'm not about, certain about I think they'll, be, they'll be, be everywhere. everywhere. I, don't I don't think it'll have to be top the top coat the top will go coat quick, will quick because one load, one load. Per, per. Right. The big layers, the layers. Now, what about those um, cutouts, or not cutouts, the driveways we're going to do along there? Uh, the powder horn the gland, aprons. Yeah. the aprons. Powder horn gland, and we're going to do Cummings Road. So the, so the, the Cummings road, road, is road is dug up on dug Wednesday. Up on Wednesday. And we will and put we will some real back, back in there. In there. You've got the ground pass ball that we're going to put in for paper. And, yeah. and then the, the temple did more, did more for a little, a little bit, bit more, more to have it more of a graph off the off new, new blacktop. New black top. Yeah. But they got a blacktop over that, so there's an ape in there. You're going to yeah. fill a yeah. little bit and then blacktop over it. Yeah. 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 Good. There's actually actually the work parts how far you going to be going. Nice. And they're doing that too. Pike is doing that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. Anybody else have any questions of Guthrie or of the select board? No. Okay. Well, we'll go on to our next item. Thank you, Guthrie. Thanks, Guthrie. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I'm good you. evening. I'm good you too. Uh, County Road project is done. And 7:45. We're a little early, but I see maybe the cemetery committee is here. Yeah. We're here. You're here. I'm here. Okay. Um, so we have three bullets here. One is appoint town clerk to cemetery committee. So, uh, uh, you're John John Boucher. John Boucher. Yeah, yeah. I've served on the committee for a while. Uh, a little history. Elliot is uh, safe to say he's going to start. Uh, Tony is responsible for the back. 
or more. Um, and I've agreed to take on some of that yeah. until a, a full-time sexton uh, gets put on. Um, and so as far as Rosie getting on the board, uh, she, she likes some reputation, representation on the commission uh, because a lot of it affects her uh, as, as things come through yeah. uh, her office. So she'd like to have some say in that. I think, I think that's where that, that comes from. And that's going to work for you? It, very much so, yeah. OK. Yeah, definitely. So what does everyone else think of that? I agree. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. OK. Yes. Okay. So, so we should move forward on that. Yeah. And I thought it was very useful at the town website that for the cemetery committee page, it pointed out, it just described the history of the town vote to give the select board control over the cemetery committee, and that it was our March 18th, 2019 meeting. Uh, so it was very easy to go look up the minutes, and what we did on March 18th, 2019 was simply move to create a five person cemetery committee. So, in the interest of you know, following up on that and uh, you know, keeping this transparency, this reference to what happened in the past, I put together the following motion, which is a little fancier than we usually do for our motions, but it's, it's fairly standard for motions other places. Uh, it's, um, and I can email this to you. I appreciate that. It's, um, whereas a select board created a five-person cemetery committee on March 18th, 2019, and whereas a town clerk is responsible for cemetery deeds and the upkeep of the cemetery records, be it therefore resolved, that the town clerk is ex officio an additional voting member of the cemetery committee, making a total of six members on the committee. Is that oh, so that'd be like six. Do? Why ex officio? Uh, because, uh, as Rosie pointed out in her email, she doesn't want to be appointed as an individual. She thinks the town clerk should be the member. Oh, right. And then she's not a resident of the town. Right. As mm -hmm. as well. Right. So whoever is the town clerk Precisely. is. A member of the committee, and we don't have to keep reappointing somebody if we change town when we change town clerks. So let's say it's going to be John, Rosie, Elliot, Tim, the two Lansons, Tim, Lanson. Tim, Tim Lanson. I don't Tim know where his son. Okay. And Mark Lane is the other. Oh, Mark Lane. Uh, there's one more too. Yeah, that's only five. There's a uh, I don't know, like from Fred. Her 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 name escapes me, but there's a lovely lady that is on there as well. Emily, go ahead. Emily. Emily. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. That's, that's the easy one. <laughs> uh, so the second one, when I... So do you want to take a vote on oh, that? Yeah, well, let's get that vote done on that, uh, getting Rosie on the oh, cemetery we committee. Need a second. What's that? We need a second. We need a second. Yeah, I'll we'll second it. Well, yeah, because the motion is so long, everyone might fall asleep. Well, <laughs> you proposed it as a resolution, not as a motion. I proposed it as a... Okay, so don't you move in uh, resolution? I'm, I'm just, you know, you're... Yeah, be, be it therefore resolved. So is there another way to phrase it? So it's a motion? I mean, that, does it not have effect the way it's uh, phrased? It's, that's fine. It's yeah, a motion. Okay. okay. Well, let's call it a motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who seconded it? Who's John? John, John. Oh, John, you second, even though you didn't know you were really second, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You knew what I second. Okay, you knew. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a motion. <laughs> right. It's okay. I figured we'll, we'll, we'll work on it either way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll second it either way. That's right. Okay, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Phew. Okay. Wow. That was quite the piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the second one, I, I guess you were going to say something to that, John, but it's a funding, funding request for Doty Cemetery Survey. Correct. So uh, when Elliot um, stepped back, presented some of the maps to me, um, it quickly became uh, that, that the maps needed some attention. And, and so I, I did some work on these maps and have something we can work with at this point. However, I feel that the northern section of that cemetery really needs to be uh, surveyed. Uh, we had a cemetery commission where everyone was more or less agreed uh, to have that section surveyed. So you don't really know what the line is at the top? By the trees. It's not so much the the the, uh, the boundaries of the cemetery, but the boundaries of the lots. Oh, the lots. Yeah. That are on the side. So that's that's what you mean by survey the the plots of the lots within the. Oh, each lot. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Correct. Correct. Has that ever been done? Well, we so, have markers. Well, I mean, we? I have markers there. Are you saying they're in the wrong place? <laughs> what I'm saying is not everyone does have markers. 
Yeah, right. And and, uh, and the maps don't necessarily correspond with, there's no consistency on the section where your lot is. There's yeah. no consistency at all. Yeah, they're so like, oh, let's put the vibes there. Kind of, yeah. Oh, well, um, Jesus. Wasn't I there an Eagle Scout over. project? What's that? So that when was... No, that was a different yeah. uh, cemetery. Was it? Okay. Kate, that was Kate. Thank uh, you. Yeah. So there was some, some Eagle Scout project that was in, in, uh, involved in getting drones and taking yeah. photos and and I don't know where that is or whatever oh. happened to that but it wasn't um, precisely uh, you know. how, how do you how do you conduct a survey of the well uh, good question uh, so you got to get the, the boundaries of, of the property right mm -hmm. and then um, you know that's a good question for the survey I really well, just the property transfers so there should be some transfer records yep. for the for the plots but they're not always kept up to date yeah, but they're also not, they're not measured off in, in front right. boundaries. Right. They're, then, they're, they're just, oh, you can have this 10 feet right. by 10 feet. Kind of. That's yeah. what it's, that's what it's, yeah. it's And it's not done in any relation to any other boundaries. And yeah. then you have to check and see if there's somebody there or not. Correct. What? Well, you never know if there's somebody buried there or not. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I've been through this before. You can get I don't know if anybody that. can even do that. Well, you and can. So, you can get more accurate. So anyway, so yeah, we, have, we have the northern part that where mm -hmm. your lot is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's used. It's there. So I'm proposing to uh, um, the section, uh, I guess, would be to east of that. Yeah. Uh, have all that surveyed, individual lots laid out, consistency to those yeah, lots. Yeah, because those aren't sold yet. Precisely. That's oh, right. you can at least mark where those right. lots are. Right. And In relation your, to the your question earlier, yeah. has it been uh, surveyed? So there is a survey on the southern portion of that cemetery. So the, as, as you go into the road, the southern side of that road, is we do in fact have uh, a, a survey on that. Chase and Chase did that years ago. So you've got, you've got set markers that you can work off Correct. to get accurate measurements going forward. But going back, it's a little tricky. It, it, that map is going to look ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's going to look. There's going to be some overlapping. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and and, and I, oh, well. my my feeling is we get it cleaned up now before yeah. it gets in worse. No, good idea. In Especially fact, as you move forward. From this point forward, I, exactly. I do not have the intention of selling thing anything on that side uh, any any longer until we do get something down. Okay. So, so that's a selling point. If if we do this survey then we can go forward and continue selling plots in the cemetery right. otherwise no no that's not entirely accurate okay. because on the southern side of the road um, that is surveyed okay and that's where i intend to continue on okay. selling lots okay so i'm sorry let me try again sure um so if we get the survey done then for the area surveyed we will be able to sell lots whereas otherwise we would not be able to. Correct. Okay, thank you. Well, he doesn't want to sell lots in unsurveyed territory. Yes. Right. He wants to sell lots in a known place in the second. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. Where he already has a survey. Right. 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 Perfect. So how much is that? So I think the, the number was not to exceed 10,000. I, and I don't know what, we, we recently had uh, Berlin Corners surveyed. In fact, I just came from a meeting before this. And that came about $2,500 to have that survey it's a different animal in the yeah. sense that up there it was just completely flat ground no right you know no pre-sold lots in this area it was just start from scratch sort of thing so it is a bit of a different animal um, so that's why I came up with the not to exceed number okay that's what we need to do and there's no money set aside and, and there's no budget for that or there is? I don't think there is. There is not, no. Right. Um, and, and then that kind of brings me to the next point. That, uh, uh, I think Rosie had on there capital. Or include, ca include cemetery and maintenance and capital. Yeah. Um, so traditionally cemeteries are set up where a portion, I think it's 20% of a lot, 20% of the cost of a lot would go into a perpetual care fund. It's either 20% or 80%. I kind of forgot. Oh, what say is that for every every cemetery? Is that somewhere written? In? I, I think it's law, yeah. I don't know if it's law or not, because they, they don't all do it. They don't all do it. Trust me, they, they expect that the, the, the families to take care of those. Yeah, so well. some cemetery. Yeah, what? so. No, it's um, true. I, pardon? I'm telling you. It's not the same yeah. everywhere. There's a book, there's a whole book called on cemetery law too. Yeah. What? So, yeah, there is. That's interesting. But we take care of the cemeteries we maintain them. Right. Well, you, you're, 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 you're on a budget and, and so yeah. forth. In theory, 
what should happen is a perpetual care fund should be set up, and it should have been set up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. That earns interest. That's what you spend the money on is to maintain the cemeteries. A lot, of, a lot of cemeteries don't have that. A lot of cemeteries were operated using committees, um, using cemetery commissions that were assigned to those cemeteries. And then when those cemetery committees fold, the town in which those cemeteries are located have to, are required by law to take over those Correct. cemeteries. That's what happened. Some in and some some of these committees voluntarily turn it over to the town. Right. And then the town can maintain any money they have and can set it aside in an appropriate manner. Right. But some cemeteries have zero money. Right. Right. And that's what happened with Popper Popper Hill over there. Well, that's when you don't yeah. have money for perpetual care because there's no money for it. Right. So I'm not sure the history of Doby, or how that came to be, but at some point there must have been a perpetual care fund set up for that. Had to. And in it, in it, in it, it, correct. We have one, though. No. I, I, I thought we know. had a perpetual care Me fund too. of some sort. Not for for, but would be normally it's designated per cemetery. But you could just step down and easily just say for all cemeteries. Right. So what happened with Poplar? Poplar Cemetery over there, they ran out of money. Of course, it's owned by cows. Right. And there was a committee of people and commission that <coughs> somewhere east from East Montpelier. And but they ran out of money. Right. And then the cows didn't want to maintain it anymore. Right. And so they wanted us to maintain it because most of the people buried on East Montpelier. Yeah, but that's so since we were but it's cows. their real estate. Right. right. I know it was their real estate. It's like what? Well, they, they and I'm glad that went that direct because it's it not did. a problem. I was like, no way. That's a requirement. Yeah, they didn't want to. Right. I think it's up to like a $50 fine or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there, is there a fine. Oh, it's some minor thing. It's but anyway, they ran out of money, so that's a good point. <clears throat> but we don't have that. The town's always making. The town's always making. Right. So, so the logic here is do we want to start funding that? Funding a capital, you know, a capital plan to, as we move forward. So it doesn't look A capital right? plan for, for what? Well, for improvements, like for instance, here we are getting a survey done. Yeah. Um, so that we go to expenses such as that. Couldn't couldn't it be more like um, an annual line item in the regular budget? Yeah. Because that's not really capital. Okay. Yeah. That's well, it is if you build a fence. How do you rent it? <laughs> it is. Well, I'm sure. And I mean, we did that. I don't know certain, where we got the money for that. There's certain things that are capital. But what if you build it out of wood? That's still capital. <laughs> <laughs> that's still capital. <laughs> it just. There's I'm just saying that there's, there's some there's some things <laughs> that's that a capital expense. I mean, you got to decide what you want to put in the capital. I know, like like mowing the lawns and all that stuff. That's that's operational. Correct. Is cleaning the, the stones operational? Yes. It's 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 not it's capital expense, but buying gravestones a capital expense. I can assure you. If you you mean <laughs> buying a gravestone? <laughs> yeah, but that's not. The town's they're not. The town's not going to do that though. Right. Maybe they replace one. So what about what about equipment? Yeah, equipment. We so how did we buy the last tractor? I thought we just bought that. I think we did. We did, yeah. That's it. The town bought it. Yeah. Big deal. Okay. That's it's nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand because all the money comes from the same place. Okay. So and you're it, just it, saying if you have a fund there, it's... My concern was when I realized there was no, no perpetual care fund. I mean, how, right. how, do we, how do we start one? And, and uh, you yeah. know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, that well, I mean, it's a good fun. question, but I'm just trying to figure out why, what would be the advantage. Yeah. Your, the advantage would be you wouldn't have to go to the select board, but you still would have to take money yeah, out because yeah. you're a committee and not a commission. Sure. If you're a commission, then you're an entity that has its own money. Right. But we stopped doing that. Right. We went to a committee. Now the committee is every time you need money, you come here. That's right. Didn't we just look at something recently suggesting that we get rid of some of the special funds that we have? Well, that was to put... We still have the names, but we put the funds together. Mm -hmm. But we still have each... Fun name, okay. but the money is lumped together. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I'm just, I'm just being the devil's advocate. No, I, hear I don't it. really care one way or the other. But I'm just wondering, why would we change the way we've been doing business? You bring up good points. I don't. Have any. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you get paid to be the big bucks. Yeah, I know, the big bucks. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just. I, I want, I want to hear you. What's that? I want to hear you. I want to hear the advantage. Yeah, um, you know, I, perhaps it was more of a this is how we do it in other places. And yeah. I recognize that it's not being done this way. And, right. You know, is there some long term benefits toward okay, it? Okay, but the perpetual care thing was set up so they had their own money. Right. You'd be surprised at how many don't anymore. And, they don't and, have their own money. But they what does it matter, though, John? Tell me. Well, it matters if the towns don't want to provide perpetual care. 
there's some bylaws in some cemeteries that say that, that the funding they have will provide perpetual care, and some towns don't want to pay for perpetual care. Right. Some of them will say that the family is responsible for, 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 for perpetual care. So it just all depends on what the bylaws are. You'd have to kind of look at each cemetery. Right. And then the town would have to decide if it wants to provide for perpetual care or not. A lot of towns won't do that. Cleaning their gravestones, things like that. Yeah. So perpetual care traditionally is <clears throat> not included cleaning the gravestones. So that's a lot of the, I, I find that to be a bit of a misconception. Well, it's like repairing broken stones and, and straightening that, out. Not even some perpetual care, from my understanding, is mowing, mowing and trimming. Oh, uh, see, that's the, that's the point. Perpetual care, from my point of view, is is taking care of the stones, and the stones are maintained uh, most of them. Like over here at Plainmont Cemetery, my understanding that the families take care of those stones there. Right. And anyway. But yeah. well, that would seem to be something that a family would want to do. If they still had a family there, there's right, but if they may not. The family. I mean, 100 years later, that stone's still there, and it's right. covered with moss. So how does that work? It, it's covered with moss, so somebody decides to clean it, like the guy who was on TV this right. weekend cleaning Veterans uh, stones up in the north, up in Newport area. So Just because he thought it would be a nice thing to do. Yeah, nobody's doing it. And I talked about doing. My parents are buried over in Claymont, and I, and I, and I talked about straightening the stone over there, and and um, they don't really like you to do that. That's right. They want to let. They want you to hire a contractor to do that. And our contractors will do that. Yeah. Oh. Huh. So anyway, that's yes. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we have a document that's available on the excellent town website under the Cemetery Commission called Revised East Montpelier Cemetery Rules and Regulations. It's from 2005, and one of the sections is care of plots, and it says the general care of the cemetery is responsibility of the sexton. It includes cutting of grass at reasonable intervals, raking and cleaning the grounds, and the pruning of shrubs and trees. It says, uh, general care assumed by management shall in no case mean the maintenance, repair, or replacement of any memorial placed or erected upon plots, nor the doing of any special or unusual work, nor does it mean the reconstruction of any marble or granite work of any section or plot or any portions thereof. And it says an endowment fund shall be established whereby the town of East Montpelier will hold and invest the principal sum deposited and use the income therefrom to help defray the costs of operations of the cemeteries, parenthesis, perpetual care. So that's those are the rules that we are operating under from a previous select board from 2005. But saying the sexton is, sexton is responsible for doing the duties. Yep. And we pay we pay for and it. And it's it's, it's the stuff that John was describing right. and not right. cleaning the, the memorials or replacing yeah. them or anything like that. It's not doing that. It's not it's doing, doing that. that. Right. Yeah. And and that we shall have a perpetual care uh, endowment fund. We do have it. somewhere. <laughs> That's what I thought. We might, yeah. we might want to check on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Double check first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I know in Hardwick that. There's, a, there's a, a big cemetery that um, is shared between the Catholic Church on one side and Protestants on the other side, which is, is owned, one side is owned by the town of Hardwick, the other side is Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church is going to turn it over to the town, but they don't have any money set aside for maintaining any of the stones. Or and that's sort of the... the the MO of, of this. That's the way it works. Yeah. Oh, we're out of money, sorry. Yeah. And then the, yeah. And right. Over. Yeah. And then as people get older, you know, and people pass away, there's less interest in the cemeteries right. and right. in the towns are right. taking them over and trying to follow the rules. So if you established a fund, then we we say what you could do with funds. Yep. And that would be in the capital, right? if we establish a fund instead of just a line item in the main. Well, I'm just thinking of cleaning the stones and all that. Right. Sounds like a good idea. I mean, what the heck? It's not getting done. It's not going to get done. Yeah. The only way it will get done is if the sexton said, hey, this should be done, I'll hire somebody to do it, and, ask and we just pay the bill, Right. which would be, which would be yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. So according to our last town report, as of June 30th, 2021, the non-expendable perpetual care funds are a total of around a hundred thousand dollars. So there is there is a fund there. So can we use take ten out of that fund or no? Um, 
Oh, and there are expendable funds as well. I don't know. It's not clear here what the difference is between expendable and non-expendable. Maybe the expen oh, non-expendable yeah, non are for earning interest. You just, you just gain. You just spend interest. interest. Okay. That way, the fund never disappears. Okay. okay. So the expendable funds include uh, are up to a little over fifteen thousand. So ten thousand. Right. So so. so is, that, is this still growing from contributions that we make to it from the? Yeah, share of sale plots. Sale plots and, and, and interest. Yeah. Well, interest is a no-brainer, but I don't know if it's convenient. So for I, I don't know as we're getting money into it from the sale of plots. For Doty Cemetery, it says in the town report, uh, or the report from the cemetery commission, that a poor grave plot costs fourteen hundred dollars, which includes seven hundred fifty for perpetual care. Two graves is eight hundred, includes three seventy-five for perpetual care, et cetera, et cetera. So that information was great. That, I mean, that information came from Rosie. I'm not sure. Who, yeah. Were you familiar with that, Gene? So who, who's actually taking the money and putting the funds? It's got to be Rosie. I think it's Rosie. Okay. That's why she's on the committee. That's why she's on the committee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, Captain Obvious. Okay, so then um, would the survey come out of that one? It could. It seems appropriate, right? It does. Yeah, I mean, it does. Absolutely. Are they expendable part of it? Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 So I think that answered the question. Okay. Great. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm tired now. Do we need a motion to that effect? To take it out of the. To, to authorize the cemetery. I think we should. To yes. spend up to $10,000. Yeah. Yes. I'll second it. Okay. You made the motion. Did I make the motion? Or did you? Okay. No, he, he, okay. He, he did. He liked it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am. I'm getting. I'm using up on my seconds. You know. <laughs> I think I've used up my motions. Any further discussion about the cemetery? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. And thank you for doing taking over that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was very interesting. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. yeah. Very informative. Actually. Right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it all. Good thank stuff. You. Yeah. Right. Hey, John. Yes. John, for more information on that, the, the Secretary of State's office has a book on cemeteries and cemetery law. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, that was great. Wow. Um, so we've already done the East Montpelier Gully Jumpers. The next item, 805. Discussion on charge point level two EV charger. This is one that Carl brought up, discussed last. He also sent out an email about yeah. the charger and the cost for the, what was the other one? Uh, the name escapes me. What was the other charger? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Clipper Creek. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I looked into it, um, and I, I checked with sales at Clipper Creek. I checked with Dave Roberts of Drive Electric Vermont on buying something from Clipper Creek, and he endorsed it. He said that not everything, uh, it's not bulletproof, but nothing is, uh, and um, nothing in the charger world is. Uh, he brought in Tom Fisher uh, from Efficiency Vermont, and he said from his personal and professional experience with Clipper Creek chargers, they're great. Uh, there are two options that would be appropriate for the amperage that we have over there. Uh, there's one that is ruggedized. Uh, the cables are upgraded. Um, basically, it's the one for a lot of people who are not owners of it, handling it to make it more foolproof. So the cables are, are better in cold weather. They're more flexible, that sort of thing. And it has a five-year warranty as opposed to a three-year warranty. Uh, I don't have the prices in front of me, but it's like a um, $1,400 versus $1,700, or so like $300 premium for that. It seemed worth it. Uh, I have reached out to an installer that um, that Bill of, of uh, Washington Electric recommended to us, Bill Paul, and um, I just want to talk to him about the process of taking out the charge point one and putting this one in. Um, so. I'll get some more information on that. Uh, I did look on eBay for how much ones like this are going for in the used market. And even though Bill Powell said, you know, new, they, whack with a grant, pay like $16,000 for it. Uh, and eBay, it's like a tenth of that right now. 1500 so, Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not a huge source, but it 
can cover most of it. Most, maybe, maybe all of it, depending yeah. on how much of the, the installer charges. I don't know why we wouldn't do it. Yeah. So, I'm. I don't have a specific proposal because I don't have a quote from the installer yet. Uh, but after I talk to him, then hopefully at the next select board meeting, I'll be ready to put a specific proposal. Get some figures on it. I mean, I'm interested in the ruggedized ones, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't know why we would not put one in. Yeah. Yeah. It just sounds like it's the wave of the future, it looks exactly. like. And uh, that one doesn't work well. So right. get rid of it. So, anybody else have any? Thoughts? Agree with you totally. Then Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board. Well, keep up that discussion, uh, Kyle, and maybe you'll have more information in the next meeting. Yep. Yep, perfect. Sounds great to me. Good work. Yeah. Well, we also did also did the next item, which is discussion on Front Porch Forum post of agendas. Um, and we're all right with that. <clears throat> You're good to post it and see what happens. Um, town Treasury report. So we have the August report um, because we're still dealing with some delays. Um, she just got the statement late last week for the um, September bank statement. So she's going to work on that report next week. Unfortunately, didn't have time to get that done for today. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing necessarily earth shattering in there. Um, I'm working on building out an updated forecast for the current year because as we all know the budget the, we already have some overages and we all knew that when we hired you know when the staff yeah. hired mm -hmm. in and of itself yeah. um so i'm going to be working on that pretty hard starting next week um that will be taking up the vast majority of my time and all of this is in preparation because we'll have to be taking off budget process here pretty soon so we really yeah. need to get a reforecast of the current year which will then translate yeah. into the fy24 budget yeah um, yeah so i and i'm building a little bit more detailed way of kind of building the budget than what's been done in the past because there's just there's just more going on a little bit more going on now um, with the different yeah. st staffing structure that we have and as we look forward. Um, so yeah. um, So anyway, and in conjunction with that, Michelle wants to revisit the monthly reporting package as well and we may enhance some of those reports, but again, one step at a time. Um, so you have the August report, I'll have the September report at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we're going to get on a better cadence, um, bank reports are starting to come in, things with M&T are working a little bit better. That being said, um, next week we do have some meetings with some banks to start opening up some dialogue. Um, we talked to people at the LCT Town Fair, um, both Michelle and I did. We, we spent a lot of time in that in that vendor area actually speaking with some vendors, um, just the payment portal that we have, for example, a vendor that was there that has a more robust payment portal than, than what we're using that seems to be a bit more efficient. So just trying to see what's out there. So she and I have, I think, two or three meetings next week with different local banks um, to see what else may be out there because we were just very disappointed as many people were with um, the m and rollout and then the support that we've also been getting post the, the conversion from people. So, well, I know so that we talked. I know we talked about changing banks a few years ago. I remember you were on that mm -hmm. discussion, mm -hmm. and I was too. And I can't remember the objections that Don had, but it seemed like there was a few who had to do with lines of credit or FDIC or something like that. So we, we would like, I would like to see us do business with a local bank that right. we're in Vermont. Right. That personally, what I'd like to see happen. Mm -hmm. I don't like out-of-state banks. It's a pain in the neck. Yeah. It's not yes. controlled by the state. The state yeah. has no control. Yeah, it's just not a good deal. And that's one of our goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too, because we have been approached by other nationwide banks, and my, my comment always is, "What well, doesn't really seem to get us in any different situation than what we're currently right. in." So right. I would rather look to change our situation and go with a Vermont bank. So yeah. that is the I would intent. Love so. Yeah. So we're going to start opening up that dialogue, getting some information, comparing, of course, mm -hmm. um, what we would get from the different banks. And yeah. Go from there. Oh, great conversation. So it works out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're certainly receptive. Believe me, the banks are. The bank if, if they know you're with M and T, they're they're. 
are definitely quick to grab you and, yeah. and right. open up dialogue with you because they know odds are you're not happy. So yeah. Okay. So that's the town treasury report. Anybody have any questions for Gina? No. Um, you reminded me about VLCT meeting, and uh, by rights, it would have been helpful for me to bring a report from the VLCT town meeting yeah. and so on. And uh, I made a bunch of notes for it, but I didn't put it together for tonight's meeting. So if you could put that on the agenda for our next meeting, then that will be a reminder to me that I right. can do that. Exactly. Okay. So the next item is discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. So I updated this just a little bit to provide this three points of data that the CDC does provide, <coughs> mm -hmm. um, which is the case rate for 100,000 population, new COVID-19 admissions for 100,000 population, <coughs> and then percent of staff inpatient beds in use by patients with confirmed COVID-19. So just we're Still showing is low, um, but these are the three data points. So, and what I would like to do, in lieu of my usual discussion of the community uh, transmission, is to highlight an article from the Washington Post. From uh, looks like it was updated on October 13th, published October 12th. About a uh, we are in trouble study raises alarm about impacts of long COVID. Is the title. And it's talking about a Scottish study of near, nearly 100,000 participants, including people in this country, that, uh, that found that between 6 and 18 months after infection, 1 in 20 people had not recovered from COVID, and 42% reported partial recovery only. Uh, the reassuring aspects to the study were that people with asymptomatic infections are unlikely to suffer long-term effects and vaccination appears to offer some protection from long COVID. So it's, it's gonna have, it is having and will continue to have ripple effects long after people are initially infected. Mm -hmm. This will affect insurance rates going forward. Yes. Not in the right direction. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah. And the flu season is hitting us earlier than usual this yeah. year, so I was initially planning to get vaccinated in late November so that my um, vaccination effect would carry over into the spring flu season, but now the advice is go in as soon as possible if you haven't got well, before the vaccination. Holiday, yes. I, I went into K Drugs just to see because they were saying that uh, you know, you could just step in. everybody's advertised, just drop in. Yeah. Yeah. The drop in for Kenny Drugs is the 28th of, of October. Wow. And they said they've been doing a, a vaccination every 10 minutes. Oh my god. Really? And really? During the, well, while they're open. Huh. Did you go any other places? Um, I contacted Walgreens, I contacted CVS, I contacted Walmart, <laughs> all of them. And, um, and you, you have to wait. Is that, so the flu town, the, huh? is that for the flu to get the yes. vaccine? Yes. Yeah. But, is, but um, a lot of places are doing the booster too at the same time. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't check on it because I already had the booster. So no, number four, or number four. What? what? Number five. five. Number five. Oh five. Oh yeah, baby. You paid five. Oh yeah. Five, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's got the it's it's it, it covers the oh, right. and then oh, the, yeah. and then the variant. Oh, I forgot about those. Okay. Two. You down there. I had three. But I had. But you had. Yeah, you had. I had it really bad. They say that does does carry it forward for a while. So anyway, I didn't have any luck unless I want to hang around until sometime in November. But I wouldn't say don't check. I would continue to check. If so you had to put your name on a list, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. And well, you know, the funny thing about it was, I, I they told me, um, I think the first, and Kenny Joyce um, said it was like going to be this Friday. And I said, nah, I, I'm going to be driving. I don't feel like having a shot before I drive mm -hmm. 15 hours, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, but I went back and I said, oh, no, I'll do it. <laughs> it was gone. Yeah, and the next closest one was was, really? um, <clears throat> was Walgreens and Hardwick. And uh, and I didn't jump on that one, and that was gone. Like, really? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. And that was just the flu or the fifth shot? Flu. I got the fifth shot after a, meeting, a couple of meetings ago when Carl said that there was going to be um, a public event up in Berlin oh. um, for COVID vaccine. So I went right up there. It's still gone, the free clinic in Berlin. But they didn't have the, the booster. The, 
I mean, the, not the booster, but the flu shot. shot. Yeah. Oh, we had the flu shot. shot. They don't have, they the, don't have the enhanced, enhanced one. one. The enhanced for anybody yeah. over sixty-five, yeah. you can get the you can get a, a, a boosted up flu shot. Oh. But what if you hadn't had the fourth <laughs> COVID booster? Then take the fifth. You don't have to go back to the fourth. Just jump ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I think we've beat that one to death. Uh, discussion on town management light of COVID nineteen will cost that off. Um, so now we have warrants. We need the special expense warrants. I didn't see anything too too crazy. I did see a. I did see a. A vaccine for for uh, rabies or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to bring it up, but, this. Yeah. but yeah. I thought, I thought that was... If you flip that page, Seth, that is the Lister's document. You'll see yeah. there's a second column there that says select four. Yeah. So that can be passed around with the same thing. Yeah. So, so this spring, as animal control officer, I got uh, vaccinated against rabies. Oh, good. And then they've asked us to come back and have our blood drawn and check to see how well it took. Oh, good, because they, they, have, have, they don't really do that, do they? They, yeah, don't, they, they do it for dogs work. and cats, but did you, have to, you didn't have to go to the fire station, did you? So, uh, <laughs> you didn't know where he was going. <laughs> yeah. You're being recorded, you know. I know. <laughs> Deb Blotman. <laughs> Deb, Deb Blotman organized this event for, um, I believe she organized it through a vet tech organization. Yeah. Uh, but you know there are animal control officers, vet techs, vets uh, from New Hampshire and Vermont at least. I don't know further than that. And uh, there's probably 60 people signed up for that. Okay. And uh, so that was over. I think two weekends or two two shots, maybe three. I don't remember. Um, but we, we went to her house in uh, East Montpelier and Center Road huh. and, uh, and got the shots and got a little candy and uh, <laughs> went on our way. Yeah. But uh, but the question is, um, how well did they work with our immune system? Yeah, so they're gonna check. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's good follow. Good to be safe. Yeah. So it actually checks your level of whatever antibodies. I guess. Yeah, antibodies, right? Yeah. Huh. yeah. So I, I had a question uh, about absolute spill response, hazmat disposal, and I looked in there and it just talked about disposal of contaminated soils. What contaminated soils? That was a soils? spill from last winter. Okay. That was near like North Country Credit Union. This was just the second mill for that. Okay. Um, oh, Do you know what was spilled and who spilled it? I believe this was before my time. Yeah. I believe it was the hydraulic. It was hydraulic fluid. Was what was it from, a, from, okay. from one of the town trucks? Okay. Oh. Wow. Thirty-three okay. hundred bucks. How much? Thirty-three hundred. Didn't see that. Yeah. It's the first oh, wow. one. The first one. You I can't remember what the I last thing was for. You jumped over this number I one. I went right to the rabies. <laughs> I wonder how much oil it was. the dial so we have an electronic keypad now on the vault the vault the vault was becoming increasingly difficult to open to the point to where there were days that Rosie would have to take a breath and walk away hmm. um, <laughs> go back in about 15 minutes and try it again and honestly we were getting concerned with the vault we couldn't get it open one day um, so you know it we had an expense. I asked her if it was the last time the vault was serviced, and she said not since she had been here. 
there's a budget line item every year of $1,000 for vault maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I think 137 has been spent since 2020 on it. So yeah. I think, unfortunately, the lack of any attention to the vault kind of got us to where we are today. Sure. So we are going to exceed WD, that budget line item for WD this year. WD-40 yeah. from the lock. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you should see the instructions for how to open it. It's quite comical for how to open that previous dial. Oh, yeah. It was like go pass, go just beyond the number. Yeah. It's, oh man. It was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> so if it's if it's um, electrical, is it battery operated? It is. Um, and yes, we know how to replace the, the batteries. Uh -huh. and we know how to do all that we need to do. Um, and it's, and a battery. it's very easy to change. And the other beauty with this is it is easy to change. The so battery. staffing changes. No, I mean even the code. Okay. So staff changes okay. the curve. Okay. We can change the combination on the bolt. Um, nice. So that's the other thing we like about Rosie has long wanted an electronic um, mm -hmm. electronic lock mm -hmm. or whatever the lock of not a dial but you know what I mean mm -hmm. electronic code mm -hmm. uh, to open the yeah he had to open the lock so or open the vault so um, so it was money well spent we got to see the inner inners of the door of the oh vault uh, when he opened it up yeah. and um, he thoroughly serviced it it's amazing to open the handle now how smooth and easy that is nice. to open. Um, so yeah. it was definitely well spent, but obviously $750 over the, the current year budget, but money that unfortunately, I think, you know, who knows if we had, we possibly could have spread some of that out over the years because part of that was maintenance and right. also the replacement of right. it. So no, I'm totally on board with that. Yeah. yeah. So if um, if the battery runs out, is it easy to replace the battery? Yeah, it actually is. It and honestly out? too, it's, um, it's two, uh, the nine volt battery yeah. batteries that are in there. Yeah. What I also love about it is, you know how those the little connections for those always seem to go bad, and that inevitably seems to be what you run into a lot with nine volt batteries. It's just a plug, so you, they can actually replace that connector for okay. the battery. So okay. it's, I, I like the way that the system works. It seems to be a nice keypad that can really carry you into the future, so you're not stuck replacing it when, yeah. when some of those quirky things happen. So we're not so, locked out if the battery runs out no, because we've no. forgotten to replace yeah. it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I'm uh, taking Wednesday through Friday off. Um, I have a few, uh, an appointment tomorrow, so I have a slightly uh, flex schedule, but um, couldn't take the whole week, but at least taking Wednesday through Friday. Good. Beautiful nice. time for it. Yeah. Yeah, weather's been good too on the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good weather. Uh, so we do have a personnel match. Oh, yes. And I don't think there's anything else. Is there other business? Did you have other business? No. no. So we. And I printed what you said. Oh, it's on the. I just I remember a second ago. So we could. Uh, we have to turn off the orca recording. Right. So. I move to go into executive session under 1 BSA section 313A3, the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Appear to have it, they do have it. So we're coming out of executive session. At 827. 827. Uh, there's been no action taken. And there will be no action taken. And there will be no action taken tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. um, that takes care of that matter. Uh, what else do we have? I think it's adjourn time. Well, yeah, I, adjourn? I think it's uh, time to adjourn. Uh, and you made the motion. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'll second it. Oh, I thought you had a second. Um, I can, for this one, I can call it. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have the do that. I thought we were going to. Yeah, we were going to. Oh, we were, but then I got to go through We adjourned. Yeah, we adjourned. Oh, sorry. <laughs>